Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the garage. Today we're working on the ramp truck some more. Got uh, what I'm hoping is a, a fun and kind of interesting project going. Uh, we actually joined this project already in progress. Isn't that what they say on like TV? You join this program already in progress. We started putting in a speedometer on the truck, which sounds incredibly lame. Who needs to know how fast they're going really? Um, especially in this thing. But no, one of, the, one of the things I wanted to do with this truck was try to maintain as much of the original gauges as possible, or at least not do something that's gaudy and, and tacky and awful. A lot of people these days are putting in whole modern gauge clusters and things like this. I'm not personally a fan of that. So we already did the, the fuel sender. So uh, if you haven't seen that, in the yet to be boxed in computer, I have on here a conversion box that is taking fuel signal from the 96 fuel tanks that we've put under the bed there. And it's actually feeding in the fuel signal to the factory fuel gauge over there. Uh, and it does work for both tanks. So that's pretty cool. And today we're gonna try and keep that theme going and going one step further. So you'll remember, or perhaps you are maybe new here, maybe you wandered over from the international car show. Uh, this 67 has a 96 F350 7.5 or 460 in it, and it is running EFI. It is not carbureted because I'm ridiculous. Um, so it is running basically a standalone style ECU, uh, but that does not have necessarily outputs for or speed or you know, coolant temp, stuff like that. Uh, it, th those kind of things didn't really work with the older style gauges we wanted to use. And I didn't want to put in the newer style gauge cluster because I held the truck still here. Let me, let me show you just how kind of lame gauge clusters have gotten over time, or at least in 30 years by the time the 96 was made. Who was in here to jump at me? Nobody. All right, I've taken it apart. Um, yeah, pretty lame. Pretty incredibly lame. I think I actually probably could have retrofit this in, but there's some other things that would not have worked. So today, what we are going to be hopefully finishing up is a mechanical speedometer drive box. And essentially what this is, GPS sensor to give speed that is giving a mechanical signal to use the original sweep style speedometer in the gauge cluster, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it's one of the things that I knew I wanted to do from the start just because I don't think any other kind of speedometer really looks right in here. And we'll get this all back together today and hopefully you'll see and agree that it looks a lot cleaner and nicer with the original Speedo. So like I said, this project was already started. We started on stream the other day and got to the point of we have the box, the speed box in the truck. It's wired up. It's not like bolted in or anything like that, but it is at least wired up, it powers on, but we couldn't drive it because the original speedometer cable won't work. We need one with different ends on it. And despite what the internet says, this truck 67 needs the old style speedometer cable, not the one with the clips. You know, by the 80s and 90s, they, they had converted from the kind that thread on to one that just clips into place which makes it a lot easier to take the cluster out. I see why they did it, but we didn't need that, which is a good thing because I ordered that one originally and it's back ordered. The old school one, they had plenty of them. So we get to keep going on. And this whole deal is pretty darn simple. So I've got the wires here. I've got a lot of cut wires. I haven't, I'm gonna remove them from this pigtail eventually, but they do give you options to do signal for cruise control, for vehicle speed, for an ECU, if you're using OBD2 or some other, you know, more modern standalone system that wanted vehicle speed, this can do that. Uh, it's got a GPS signal that just uses an antenna that looks pretty similar to like a satellite radio antenna, if you've ever messed with any of that. And it just, you know, you magnet it wherever you want. And then the only stuff that this wants is a ignition power source and a ground and an optional trickle power source that it says uses 
0.05 amps, I believe, of, of draw, that basically keeps the GPS on so that whenever you go to drive, the ECU doesn't have to go, huh? Where are we? Or I guess not the ECU, but the, the GPS, you know, computer in there. So that gives you a, a little bit more usability on the go for a little bit of battery draw, which shouldn't be a big deal anyway. So now we are actually at the point. I, I took the original speedometer cable and lengthened it to the cable I was going to get so that I would vaguely know that this is where it's going to be. Now all I got to do is go thread that on and we should be able to put this thing into test mode and see if the speedometer moves. All right, so I've already got this all taken apart. Like I said, it shouldn't be too terribly bad to do, despite the ridiculousness that is the wiring back here. Out comes the old cable. And if we take a look, we got a small end and a big end. The big end should be for the speed box. The small ends look the same. So this should thread. Well, first of all, it should pop through the firewall. <clears throat> so the way these speedos work is it's a it's a square square drive in the middle, and I'm hoping it's just not. Oh, I see. It's got some float, huh? Let's just try to poke it out a bit. So that just threads right on there to the factory speedometer cable or sp factory speedometer where the factory cable goes. We'll set this back in place for now and now out here this should be a pretty good spot for this speedo cable to be you can't have any like real sharp bends in there because it uh it will bind and nobody likes binding right nobody nobody wants to bind and then this slots into the drive there wait a minute i seem to be missing something on this end. Like where, where did the threaded part go? Was that not retained? Like did the threaded part just fall right off? I think it did, but where? This is why you never use the words. This will be a quick, easy project. Well, I'm trying to figure out where the heck that just went. Okay, well, that could have been worse. Just a, just a, I guess a product of trying to work too fast. The threads are on the cable. So the, the coupler here is too big to fit through the hole on the firewall. If you can at all see, I think you can, what I mean. So off it comes. It's a good practice run, you know. We just need to feed it the other way around. Hey, there it is. Okay. Now it's back in place. Now let's hook it up out there, maybe. Now let's smack the camera into the roof of the truck. That fit tight to there. All right. That does indeed want to live pretty much exactly where I hoped it would live. Nice and out of the way. This is a weatherproof box as well, uh, so I don't have to worry about it being out here. So that's cool. And as always, all the products I use, not sponsored, just something I thought was cool and wanted to, to try out and see if it worked as advertised. Okay, so I have with this a little yeah, a button out here. And basically this will let us calibrate the system, but it will also let us test it. So without the vehicle moving, I can have this drive this to 50 miles an hour. And then we can see if the Speedo actually goes to 50 miles an hour. How I'm gonna do that by myself, I don't know, but hopefully maybe it just keeps going. Remember kids, instructions are for chumps. Also I'm a chump. While the speedometer is connected, turn the power on, release, press and release the included setup button. This will ramp up to 60 miles an hour. Did I say 50 earlier? Ooh, 60 miles an hour to calibrate this thing, huh? Luckily you can do it stationary. Uh, all right, so key in, power on, 
see if the box comes to life and press the button. And then apparently this thing will ramp up to 60 miles an hour. All right, we have light. We have light, we have a flashing light on here, which I probably assume means it's acquiring signal or attempting to. And then we're gonna, let's see, just press and hold, yep. Oh, does it only go when you're holding it? Press and release. It's not going, it, there's no way it's that quiet. No. Nah. All right, for the sake of not hearing a fuel pump whirring away while I'm decoding this, defiguring this out, defiguring this out, defiguring this out. For the sake of not driving myself crazy while I'm figuring this out, let's take the fuel pump fuse out so we don't have to hear While the speedometer is connected to the speed box, turn the power on to the speed box, did that. Press and release the included setup button. The speed box will ramp to what 60 miles an hour should be. I have to disagree with you there. That would be a no. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Well, not as easy a setup as I expected. As always. My favorite friend, the power probe. All right, you should have off ignition power, and you do. You should have constant ground, and you do. You should have no power. You don't. You should have ignition power now. You do. I was really hoping that it was just not wired right. I, I was really just hoping that. Well, the only idea I have at this point is that the speed offset button, which is what this is, can only be used once the system has actually, like, functioned. Because it does say, if it's been showing incorrectly, then do this. And I'm wondering if it's never actually acquired signal and therefore it's never even like clicked on. I have no idea. Basically what I'm saying is I'm gonna put it all together. I know what's under the gauge clusters, right? Uh, so I'm gonna put the cluster back together and I guess hit the road, see if something happens. That's the only thing I have to guess at this point. They give you no indication anywhere in here that the LED means anything. Nothing. Nada. Zip. It's either always red or flashing. Neither of which have done anything yet. All right, well, I'm gonna to start to put this back together. If you've uh, been following along, you'll know that this is about the 500th time I've been in this gauge cluster. And since that's the case, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the screw clips that hold the cluster uh, clusters around in place because yeah, uh, about two of those exist anymore. Sluster. All right, well, there's now officially more screws holding this in than probably the entire front end of the 240, if I'm going to be honest with you. And, uh, on the, on the order of bold things, that was probably one of the more bold things I've ever done, considering the fact we haven't actually seen this thing work yet. So let's just hope that that confidence is a good omen, maybe? So I put it all together, and even though the test thing isn't working, I'm gonna try to back it out to the driveway and see if, in low speed, if it shows any signs of life. I have no idea if it's working or not. I still have no idea what the red light means, if it's good or bad. My camera operator also does not entirely know if the red light is good or bad. I guess the GPS wouldn't know if you're going backwards or not. So it might actually show signs of life going backwards. It is not, however, and that is not encouraging. Not a, not a, not a sign of life at all. Absolutely nothing. Well, crap. 
but the fact that the test mode doesn't do anything leads me to believe it ain't working. I'll tell you, it is an act of precision getting in here. Good test, great test. Good job. Here's a magic trick. Apparently you can't have the cable too tight or it gets like bound up. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's about 60. All right, so it is working. It's just, I guess, very sensitive. It's very sensitive to how, how tight the cable is. And apparently it only tests for like 10 seconds, even though it doesn't actually tell you how long it tests for. So in theory it is working, but I've got to find like the perfect place for the box to live where the cable is not too tight. So in theory, it should now be working. We'll see. Buckle up. No, you, like, no, no you holding the camera, buckle up. For real, yeah, we're hitting the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess that was the, the only minor drama was how much tension the cable has on it because we're doing 35 miles an hour-ish, and the speedometer says we're doing 35 miles an hour. I'm sure my handy-dandy camera person will show the speedometer at this point. Lean into it. I don't really have any great way to tell if it's right or not. I guess I'll just have to follow somebody or find one of those cool your speed is signs. But it's a lot more information than I had before, which was none. So I'm curious how accurate it gets down to low speeds because if, if you've ever used like GPS on your phone, a lot of the times once you get below like 20, it starts to get pretty flaky. Yeah, pretty much below 10, it's just like, uh, you're going zero, which is about what I expected. I can live with that. It swings a little bit. It doesn't seem like it has as much like weight to it as the old mechanical one. So the needle kind of bounces around. But overall, I'm, in, I'm impressed that it was that easy to like get going other than instructions that are just endlessly not instructive enough. They wonder why people never read instructions. All right, well, I think that's a wrap on this little project. Uh, if you want my opinions about the, the speed box unit, I would rate it pretty highly. It's a, it's a very niche product for a niche task, and it does it. Instructions maybe could have used a little work, but I was able to figure it out. And uh, here, here's the final install. So the speed box is mounted right here. I've got the switch run to down here in case it ever needs to be calibrated, but it looked like it was fine. Cable routing is pretty simple. We've got one wire coming from uh, an ignition source up in the dash, up into here. That's for general wake up. I've got another one coming from a battery fuse box into here for a constant like trickle charge basically. And then just one for ground. And that's all the wiring there is for the speed box. Then I've got the speedo cable here. This is the old style Ford. And I've also got this, it, it seems like it's happy not super tight on there. Like if you tighten that all the way down, just like a, a normal speedometer cable, you know, sometimes they want to float. This seems to be the same way. And that might work in over time as well as this cable kind of finds its home. But now if we were to key the truck on and then press the button, I'll hear it turn on. There it goes. And then the speedometer should be at 60 miles an hour. And it is. So that works really darn well. Very happy with that. So if you're out there like me with a engine setup that doesn't have a speed sensor, 
Uh, I don't know that I actually specifically talked about this, but basically the reason that we needed this kind of GPS speed box unit is because the 96 uses a speed sensor on the rear differential. We didn't end up using the rear differential from the swap on this truck, so we had no speedo out. And because I'm using the manual ZF5 transmission that was designed with no speedometer out, cable, electronic, or, or otherwise, it was simply for Ford, you know, they knew they were gonna use the differential speed sensor, so they just didn't put one on there. So in our situation, this was the easiest way out. Pricier than I would have hoped. Uh, the total cost of the project, probably around 350. Uh, if, if you didn't have all the supplies, I would say 400. So a $400 speedometer is pricey, but I think the factor of having the original factory speedometer working on this setup is worth it. So we've got factory fuel gauge working, we've got the factory speedometer working. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the coolant gauge working, maybe someday down the road, but we've got a nice, you know, old school looking uh, oil pressure and water temperature gauge in there. I think I'm done with the gauge cluster. Now for more fun. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little project of ours that actually ended up being a pretty little project of ours. And I'll see you all later. Wait, I have to do the most satisfying thing. This is our current list on the truck. Speedometer, speed box, done. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. I've got wheel stops. They're, they're here, they're ready to go on. The brake hardware, the stuff is on massive back order. The earliest ship date that they had was April 30th. So there's a grand, it's currently just chilling right now. Uh, the, the tack, it currently works, not gonna worry about it. Gonna start the bodywork soon. The starter hang, it's been very intermittent. Uh, I do need, still need to address the clutch hardware. I did the mirror Loctite. Does that lock? That doesn't look like it says lock. That looked like it said something worse. Never mind. Just cross that out a bunch. And, uh, well, the rest of it we gotta do. All right, now that's it for real. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for keeping this supported by you and not some company. That's the way I like it.